Michaela Chester here with NCAA Digital. I'm joined by the D1 baseball guys, Kendall Rogers and Aaron Fitt. The D1 baseball field of 64 has been unveiled, guys. College World Series, June is coming up. What is your biggest takeaway from the bracket? I want to hear your guys' opinions. Kendall, start with you. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is when you look at the the top eight, you've got teams like Texas A&M who were not, you know, didn't even make the conference tournament last year being a top eight. you got Oklahoma State, a team that we all thought was going to be really good coming into the season, getting a top eight. East Carolina uh, getting a top eight. You know, they're, they're a team that didn't have great metrics, but, you know, you win your regular season championship, tournament championship, and you win 18 straight games. That's really loud for Cliff Godwin's club. And then I think when you look at the 16, Georgia Southern being a top 16. How about Rodney Hendon's club, you know, uh, finishing second in the Sun Belt, you know, finishing runner-up in the in the Sun Belt tournament, getting a top 16 seed and hosting a regional with some name-brand teams. That's kind of what stood out to me. Aaron, how about you? Yeah, yeah for me, uh, you know, I just thought it was wild this year how tight the bubble was, probably tighter than I can remember um, because we had so many upsets in the conference tournaments. And so you had a lot of very good teams sweating on selection day. And I was curious to see how the committee would fill out those spots, those last at-large spots, some of the number three seeds. Um, you know, Liberty comes to mind as a team that, that gets one. Grand Canyon, you know, teams that did, uh, those are mid-major teams that sometimes don't get the benefit of the doubt. Um, but, you know, in Liberty's case, they had a strong RPI. Grand Canyon's case had more of a borderline RPI. They still get in after dominating their league um curious to see how those teams can do you know dallas baptist a team with a totally different resume with a, a really good rpi and elite non-conference schedule and, and and struggled in conference you know can they get it going now uh, as, as they get a, a new life and get into a postseason bid so it was a fascinating year for the bubble um you know there are there are, it's hard to find right answers and wrong answers. It's kind of in the eye of the beholder. Uh, there are things that we all feel more strongly about than others. But overall, I mean, there are just a lot of very worthy teams this year. Absolutely. I'll start with probably the most worthy. Tennessee gets the number one seed in the tournament. Do you guys think anyone can beat them? They never even trailed in the SEC tournament. But they've got Campbell, Georgia Tech. What are your thoughts on that regional in Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, outside of a 2001 Miami, uh, everyone else would say, yeah, they can be beaten. Uh, with that said, when you look at Tennessee, uh, they were kind of pushed to the limit in a couple of those SEC tournament games over the, you know, over the past week. And, you know, what happened? They were able to find a way to win. Uh, and the thing about Tennessee for me that just kind of sets them apart from everybody else is when you look at the final game of the SEC tournament, they start Drew Beam as a number four starter. Like, if that's your number four guy, like, you're in really good shape in a regional. You're in really good shape in a super. So, I think they get to Omaha. But as we all know, anything can happen once you get to the College World Series. So, uh, I still like Tennessee. Would I be surprised if someone knocked them off in Omaha? Not really. Uh, I think it's a... It is a challenging field there, though, you know, for the number one national seed because, you know, and, and I think the, seat, the teams are seeded appropriately, but Georgia Tech uh, as a two seed, that's a perfect fit for their offense. It's a power hitting offense, and that's a power hitters park, um, you know, and then that's not to say that they're going to go in there and win the thing, but you never know. I mean, uh, that's, that's dangerous as a two seed. And Campbell, a team that, um, you know, has a very balanced offense. They've got power. They've got speed. They've got real arms. They've got a first-round pick on the mound. They've got a first-round pick at shortstop. I mean, that's a pretty good three seed um, that could make a lot of noise. So, uh, you know, no no gimmies here. Ultimately, I don't think anyone's probably going to pick against the Vols. They've been mm -hmm. absurd this year, but no gimmies there. So it seems to me like a lot of teams in the tournament had really big turnarounds this season. I mean, Stanford, they got so hot late in the season, they've got the number two overall seed. Texas A&M won seven conference series to finish the year. UNC is another one that had a really big turnaround. What are your thoughts on these and all of these teams that kind of turned around their season and now have a pretty good spot in the tournament? Yeah, you know, Stanford uh, Stanford and North Carolina are both teams. I thought we we came into the season thinking we're going to be really good, especially Stanford. Stanford is finally kind of playing to that level that we all expected. I think, you know, as you, as you look at other teams that have kind of turned their tide a little bit, you know, A&M, had you told me two months ago that A&M would be a top uh, six national seed, I probably would have thought you were a little crazy. But uh, give credit for, you know, to Jim Schloss, Nagel and company for getting the job done. There's some other teams in this field, too, that have really kind of changed their fortunes this year. You know, Texas State's a club that, you know, missed the tournament last year. They won 40, what, 44 plus games uh, in the Sun Belt this year. And now they're a two seed at Stanford. So there are a lot of great, great storylines here in this field. 
And, and how about Virginia Tech? You know, a team that hadn't been in a regional in a while. And last year, we right. thought they were on track to break through, and then they just totally fell apart at the very end. And this year, they go out and win the ACC and, you know, have had an incredible season. They're number four national seed. Uh, I think the Aggies and the Hokies are the two things that nobody really saw coming. We all thought Tennessee was going to be pretty good. You know, they were a preseason ranked team. Maybe we didn't think they would be this kind of juggernaut, but uh, I don't think anybody saw A&M and Virginia Tech coming to this degree. For sure. What do you guys think of the top 16 seeds? Obviously, Notre Dame, LSU, right on the edge of hosting. Do you have an opinion there on on how the top 16 shook out? Yeah, I mean, we we talk so much about what we agree with. How about what we disagree with? And I think uh, with Notre Dame and, and Oklahoma, Oklahoma in particular for me, I think when you look at the Sooners, they won five straight series to end the regular season. They won the Big 12 tournament. They had, you know, better metrics than some of these other teams. And as contenders, they had a higher RPI than A&M, who's a top uh, six national seed. I thought Oklahoma should have been the host. And I think they they made a good point today that, hey, they would like to see kind of the, all the results, you know, before they make the final determination. And I think Oklahoma definitely should have been a top 16 seed based on what it did in the Big 12 tournament, based on what it did down the stretch. Absolutely agree with that. I think they absolutely should be ahead of Texas just in their own conference if you compare their their, their merits side by side. Uh, Notre Dame, I just thought got hosed. You know, for the second year in a row. Last year they win the league by four and a half games. The ACC, mind you, this is a, a power conference, and they, they they don't get a top eight national seed. This year uh, they go 18 and 12, kind of the ACC tournament uh, in the league with a top 12 RPI. I mean, the teams with that profile always host. Uh, Notre Dame is not. They're on the road. And so that was definitely a surprise for me. I also want to talk about some individual regionals. And in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like a lot of traditionally powerful teams, think LSU, Arkansas, FSU, they're, they're not hosting this year, but they're still really strong programs. So what kind of upset potential do you guys see this year? Or do you think there is a lot of upset potential? I mean, I can... I can name off a lot of regionals here that have some really strong programs to challenge the hosting team. And and if you're asking about, you know, power conference major powers that are on the road um, that, that could be quote unquote upsets, if you will, um, to, to win a regional is maybe a three seed. I mean, how about Texas Tech, you know, going down to, to Statesboro, uh, tough matchup against Notre Dame. But I mean, it's a pretty dangerous three seed, you know, and that one, that one jumps out to me. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, you mentioned LSU, I mean, playing uh, in Hattiesburg against in Southern Mrs. Regional. I mean, that's a, that's a fascinating one there. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of these kinds of examples. TCU wins the Big 12, and now they're on the road. You know, they're going to the college <laughs> the college station to, to face the Aggies. Of course they are. Um, you know, there, there's Virginia. Can they bounce back? I mean, uh, going to, to, to Greenville after kind of a sputter at the end of the year. There's a lot of teams that I think are, uh, are fascinating to keep an eye on uh, scattered around the country. Yeah, I mean, Arkansas going to Oklahoma State. There's just so many here. It just, it really stood out to me. But do you guys have a prediction now for a team that can maybe make the College World Series that you wouldn't have thought before you saw, saw this bracket or maybe a sleeper pick for the national championship? What do you think? Uh, I'm going to go with Oklahoma. I know this is like an Oklahoma-themed, uh, you know, podcast here apparently. But I'm going to go with Oklahoma. I think when you look at the Sooners overall, I, I kind of look at yesterday, we, we just talked about, you know, the depth that Tennessee has on the mound. You know, how about Oklahoma starting Cade Horton in what is fourth game at the Big 12 tournament yesterday? Horton was 93-96. When you have a guy like that as like your fourth option, you're, you've got a really deep pitching staff. So I, I look at deep pitching staffs as, as the reason teams make runs in the postseason. And I think Oklahoma pitching-wise is in great shape. I think Oklahoma offensively, when you look at, you know, Peyton Graham, Jimmy Crooks, Blake Robertson. If you look at his OBP, it's phenomenal. Uh, their offense is balanced top to bottom right now. Oklahoma is playing at a very high level. Not only do I think they can win the Gainesville Regional, I think Oklahoma, if all the stars align, I think they can win the national championship. All right. Aaron, what do you got? So, you know, I think North Carolina's path uh, is, is is fairly favorable. You know, looking at it, your two seed is Georgia, a team that had a good RPI but really fizzled late. And, you know, we talked about UNC winning 15 of its last 17. Georgia kind of went in the other direction late. Uh, and you got VCU, who's a, is a three seed that's been around and been in regionals before. And uh, and then Hofstra making its first ever regional as your four. It feels like a favorable path there for a team that's just white hot. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll see after that. I mean, I, I do think Oklahoma State, Arkansas, um, and, and Grand Canyon as, as a three seed that's intriguing. Um, you've got some obstacles there. It's not going to be a cakewalk. But it feels like the path opened up fairly well for UNC. 
Penn State, a team that I never would have guessed a month ago uh, would have a chance to get to Omaha. Well, guys, thank you so much. We've got a lot of good baseball coming up. Can't wait to see it all play out. I appreciate your time, as always. Thanks. Right, thank you.